Well, this is a dream come true for me. I'm in Chile, in Patagonia, fishing the Baker Lodge. This is the Baker River. And it's home to big browns and big rainbows. This could be the biggest trout I've ever caught. This is Marcelo Soto. He's a guide here at Magic Waters Patagonia. Marcelo, this is the big water. This is what we're here for. What's happening today? Yeah, we have a beautiful day today. So I think uh, it's work re really good with dry flies. Dry flies? Terrestrials? Dry fly. Terrestrials or uh, dry terrestrial flies? Terrestrial dry flies. Uh, both, I think so. Both? I'm gonna, yeah. I've tied on a big chubby Chernobyl. <laughs> Let's see good. what we can do. Good. <laughs> Vámonos. Vámonos, señor. <laughs> Sweet dry fly eat. Are you actually kidding me right now? Another rainbow. Right tight against the shoreline. Good size fish, man. In two feet of water. Two feet of water. Man, they're not small fish here, are they? Ooh. <laughs> this is a normal size. This is a normal size. Yeah. I don't know if he ate it or not. Yeah, he did. Oh, that's a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> and there are these big dark shapes on the bottom. And first cast, this big rainbow just sidled over. The water was so slow, I couldn't really tell if the fish was taking it, but the dry fly just started to move a little bit. And I took a chance and set the hook, and there he was. So beautiful, big, beautiful, fat rainbow. Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we are in paradise, brown trout and rainbow trout paradise. We're at Baker River Lodge fishing for these giant fish. Now, I am joined by Tom Rosenbauer, and earlier in the season, actually in the fall, Jenna was here. So we're gonna see some of that. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. Absolutely fantastic. The new fly fisher is supported by Magic Waters Patagonia Baker Lodge, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, this is Patagonia, Chilean Patagonia to be precise. Bordered by the South Pacific Ocean and towering Andes Mountains, Chilean Patagonia is a dream location for adventure seekers, travelers, photographers, and of course, anglers. Angling opportunities in Chile are not few and far between. In actuality, if there's a style of fishing you want to do, Chile has it in spades tiny spring creeks for giant brown trout. Creeks this wide Lots and fish things. this big. <laughs> Walk and wade stream opportunities to hone your dry fly skills. Stout rivers prime for a float or to swing flies. Small ponds where dragonflies don't live long. Or giant lakes begging to be explored. Chile has it all. With so much water and so little pressure, you can choose your style of fishing day by day, whatever your wishes or the weather dictates. We are guests of Eduardo and Consuelo Berrueto, owners of Magic Waters Patagonia and the newly constructed Baker River Lodge. I'll be fishing the Baker and the surrounding area for the next few days with good friend, Tom Rosenbauer. The Baker River is Chile's largest river and is the tailwater to Chile's largest lake, Lago General Carrera. 
The stunningly clear water tinted a mesmerizing azure blue is a sight fisher's dream. Anglers have opportunities to present flies to large brown and rainbow trout, tight to the banks or off sandbar drop-offs. You can fish Baker both from a boat or there are walk and wait opportunities to stalk unassuming trout. And with a backdrop like this, it truly is fly fishing paradise. Upon arrival at the Baker River, Tom and I get settled for the night in anticipation of our first day on the water in Chilean Patagonia. We woke up to near perfect conditions for our first day on the Baker. Tom and I make quick work getting ready and load up for the short two minute drive to the boat launch. While guides Marcelo and Nico ready the boats, we ready our rods. We both start with something bold, and it wasn't long before we were ready. How big, Tom, do you think for these Chernobyls? This is Marcelo Soto. He's a guide here at Magic Waters Patagonia. Marcelo, this is the big water. This is what we're here for. What's happening today? Yeah, we have a beautiful day today. So I think uh, it's work re really good with dry flies. Dry flies? Terrestrials? Dry fly. Terrestrials or uh, dry terrestrial flies? Terrestrial dry flies. Uh, both, I think so. Both? Gonna, yeah. I've tied on a big chubby Chernobyl. <laughs> yeah, Let's see good. what we can do. Good. <laughs> Throw in a little bit. <laughs> Vámonos. Vámonos, señor. Bye bye. We aren't motoring upstream for more than five minutes when Marcelo sees something out of the corner of his eye and we make a quick stop. Here we go, first one of the day. Now that was interesting, Marcelo, because we saw that fish eat, but the atoms didn't drop. Yeah. It didn't drop at all. Yeah. But you could see the white of its mouth flash and gentle lift and it's on. That's a good fish too, man. So what we're doing is we're actually pounding the banks and we're sight casting these fish. Sweet. Oh, that's a nice rainbow. Yeah, nice rainbow. You got rainbows and browns in here, right? Yeah, rainbows and brown. Come here. Oh yeah, what a way to start the day. That is impressive. All right, let's take a look at our first Chilean rainbow trout. Fantastic fish. Awesome, on a nymph, under a parachute atoms, just wonderful.
<laughs> Sweet dry fly eat. Are you actually kidding me right now? Oh no. Oh no. He's all right. No, that's all right. Thought it was down in the wood. That was a good fish. It's good fish, man. Good Sight side. casting. Sight casting. Sight. <laughs> We've got four days of this. I might have to have a heart attack. <laughs> oh. See that? Oh, it's a brown. It's a brown. It is a brown. It's a brown. Oh. It's a brown. Yeah. yeah, that's a good brown. Good fish. Spook another fish out. I thought it ate the parachute. I think so. Just jump. Aggressive. <sighs> nice tail. Are the yeah. browns eating the rainbow yeah. Eggs, yeah. eggs now? Because it yeah. is spring here. Yeah, yeah, spring. Spring here. Yeah, it's true. Oh, it's a nice. Good fish. It's a nice fish. Good size fish, man. In two feet of water. Two feet of water. Two feet of water. <laughs> I, we've been here I, for I, 10 minutes, I can't water. believe it. <laughs> oh, it came off. <laughs> Long Every goes, bit man. of that one. Still have the nip. Release. Long distance release. That was fun, that was a big fish. That's a big one. Over 20, I think. 22 inches. I see two of them right there. Yeah, yeah. Come here. Not Eat. even the nymph, I've got a Copper John on. I've never experienced anything like this in my life. Another good rainbow. On a dry. On a dry. You know, we started out with a big Chernobyl ant, and uh, it was too big. They, they're looking for something smaller. And uh, you can sight fish these, sight cast these fish, and watch them, the water's so clear, come up and eat. Water ski them right in good, there. Man. Away we go. All right, let's take a look at this guy. Another great rainbow, but this one took the dry parachute. So fun. <laughs> bueno. What a fun morning. Lunchtime. After a fantastic traditional Chilean barbecue overlooking one of the most fantastic river views I've ever seen, Marcelo and I decide to keep with the program targeting big fish with dry flies and droppers. This time, we're sight fishing trout off sandbar drop-offs. 
As you can see, the trout are positioning themselves nose up to the drop in a feeding lie. This allows for easy access to any foodstuffs that are washed down the lie. This positioning also allows the fish to exude as little energy as possible in pursuit of food. Casting to these fish takes a bit of practice, as you must place your dry dropper in the lie the fish are feeding in. Upstream enough to allow the nymph to sink to their feeding level in the water column, but not so high in the run that the nymph sinks and gets hung up before it tumbles over the ledge into the fish. It takes a little skill and a bunch of luck. Well, we're on again, and uh, it's a good fish. So what we've got is we've got this shallow water situation dumping off into this pool, and there's a bunch of fish deep in the pool coming up eating dry flies off the surface. Um, we had a couple of refusals, and then this one came up and ate it. So we've got a parachute Adams on right now, and we're probably gonna switch over to a caddis, just because uh, Marcel has been seeing some caddis going off, but there's fish everywhere. And he ate that one, he ate that bug drowned, huh? Yeah. Again, looking for that white flash, the white flash of the, the fish's mouth to show that it's eaten. Dark fish. Oh no, it's on the nymph. On the nymph. So yeah, maybe we should switch flies, huh? Yeah. Man, they're not small fish here, are they? Ooh. <laughs> this is a normal size. This is a normal size. Yeah. That is a normal size. That's incredible. That's a 19-inch fish. Oh, oh. Again, nice. So what we've done is we've we've been struggling a little bit getting these sight casting of these rainbows. Um, they're not eating dries any longer. They're not eating droppers anymore. So Marcella moved over to a soft hackle, um, a caddisfly pupa. The first couple drifts through, it wasn't getting down below the surface of the water at all. So I put two on two number eight BBs and um, or two number eight split shot and uh, for second cast through. This rainbow came and ate it. Good fish. Adaptability helps, huh? Knowing the tricks of the trade. <laughs> and knowing this big river too, hey? Yeah. And what we're doing is we're actually sight casting. You're seeing these black streaks uh, on that drop off from the sandbar. And uh, those are rainbows just waiting for things to come off and eating. So dries to start the day and soft hackles to continue. That's fun. Nice. These fish are fantastic. Imagine what they're like if they get super fat. There you go, soft hackle right in the nose. Awesome fish. Wait, that one's still got his kite on, huh? Wow. What a game, what a f fishery, what a morning. This is ridiculous. It's, it's fly fishing paradise. Like, I don't know what else to say. It's, it's moving, it's fantastic, it's chilly. It's early season. Early season. And it's this quality of fish all morning. And this is just day one. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually speechless. That is cookie cutter, if you can believe it. I still can't believe it. Super slow. Just incredible. I'm in the bottom. Shallow water. It's total shallow water. Like off the bank, three feet off the bank, and a foot and a half of water, two feet of water. That's a good fish. I might be the fish of the day. 
So now I understand, when you say hit the bank, you're not fooling around, you mean hit the bank. Put it a foot off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Look at that. What a morning. I'm in awe. I'm in absolute shock. And to get consistent fish like this on, on a dry fly is, I, I mean, it's just amazing. Wow. Thanks, dude. We decide to make a switch after that last fish and tie on one of my favorite flies to fish, a chubby Chernobyl. When fishing a chubby Chernobyl in a variety of different speeds of water, how do you fish it? How do you fish it back to the boat? How do you fish it back to you? And the speed of the water is really the key. So when fishing a chubby Chernobyl, you're basically trying to elicit a reaction strike. So you want that fly to land with purpose. And if it's in dead water, you want to start skittering it. Maybe give it two, three skitters out. Right, and if you don't get anything, hit the next pocket, the very next pocket. You need to spot fish when you're fishing a chubby. If you've got some, um, some slow moving water along the bank, you know, you might want to let it dead drift a bit, give it a couple of twitches, dead drift it, give it a couple of twitches. But when you're moving in faster water, you want to put it as close to the bank as you possibly can and let the water do the work. Let the water present the fly to the fish because they're going to catch it and there's going to be an immediate reaction to eat that thing. And it's as much fun as you can have while fly fishing. Topwater, chubby Chernobyls, they're the way to go, in my opinion. So we decided we'd shoot for the stars and throw on a chubby Chernobyl, and then this happened. <laughs> Such a fun way to fish, man. Such a great way to fish. Just a super slow eat, but it was tight, like two inches off the bank. Another quality baker fish. You can't beat it. You really can't beat it. <laughs> Look at the colors. Fantastic fish. Just great. All right, we're going to back up. On a chubby Chernobyl. And with that fish, the weather took a turn, got cloudy, and it started to rain. Time to switch to a streamer. And did that pay off big time? Streamer fish, well, I have to say that today has been one of those days for the record books. Caught them on dries, caught them on nymphs, caught them on terrestrials, and now caught them on streamers. It's been absolutely, absolutely fantastic, Marcelo. What a day, what an absolute gem of a day. What a way to end it. Streamer fish. There we go. Fantastic. Why not, senor? Bueno. Our first day of fishing on the Baker River was amazing. The water is so blue and we went into the town of Puerto Bertrand and our guide Nico and Tomas launched the boat and it was a spectacular day of fishing, but I have to admit, it took a little getting used to this type of fishing. I don't get to fish uh, from a boat on a river very often, but Nico was an incredible guide. He really knew the water and knew what he was doing and gave me some really good instruction about where to cast.
So we fished right at the top of the rapids to begin with. Yes, let's see. Wow. I mean, it's big for me. <laughs> And then we fished down the rapids and it was so much fun. And the water did look a little bit daunting at first, but Nico was a really incredible guide and just, he knew the water so well. So, Ooh, yeah, looks like rainbow, yeah. Oh, this one's nice. <laughs> These are really strong fish. And with this current in the rapids here, they have to be. Oh man, which makes it an incredible fight. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Oh, that is a fat rainbow. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Wow. <laughs> I think that might be the biggest rainbow I've ever caught. Holy cow. We actually got into some nice fish. I did eventually get into a really beautiful rainbow trout right before lunch. For lunch, we docked on this little shoal right across uh, from the Baker Lodge, which was really neat to be able to see the lodge right from the river where we were eating lunch. And all of the other guests and the guides got together and it was really nice to be able to enjoy the environment and the river and the camaraderie that comes with fishing trips like this. It was amazing to be able to catch a fish like that right in front of the Baker Lodge, literally just right in the background. Ryan actually got his first fish of the trip that turned out to be the biggest trout he's got here in Chile and Patagonia. And getting to see how excited he was, it was, it was awesome to be able to all have a chance to fish, all get a beautiful trout out of the river that day. That is a big fish. Day two, we decide to go for a short drive to the headwaters of the Baker River, Lago General Carrera. Lago General Carrera is Chile's largest lake and plays host to great populations of big brown trout, rainbow trout, and an introduced salmonid, Japan's cherry salmon. Today, we are on the make for browns and rainbows in still and moving water. So this is the outflow of Lake General Carrera. Um, we're gonna play here for a bit, and then we're gonna head back down to the lodge, and uh, I guess I'll see you at lunch. Who's your yeah. guy today? Uh, Marcelo. Oh, I had him yesterday, he's awesome. Yeah, he's a great guy. Gonna have a blast. Yeah. That's All right, let's, let's hit go. him. Let's go. Do they seem to like the calm areas, or doesn't it matter? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't matter. So even though we're fishing right to the bank and the fish are gonna be in fairly shallow water right at the bank and come and chase the fly, I'm still fishing a, a sinking line, a depth charge line, a uh, 30 foot sinking section with an intermediate running line because I want that fly to run deep all the way back to me I don't want it to rise toward the surface. If I had a floating line on, the fly would rise toward the surface and the fish might tend not to follow it up. So uh, we're still fishing a sinking line even though the fish are in pretty shallow water because they'll eat the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole sink. 
Ooh. There. Little fish. This is an old family there. Yeah, there was. <laughs> There's a bunch of fish in there. Pretty brown trout. We want his grandfather, but uh, we'll take this. Good way to start. Hi, buddy. Go for your mama. We chased some fish with streamers, and uh, we got a lot of chases, which was really exciting. One fish ate, a couple fish ate, one fish landed. But uh, according to Marcel, the water's cold, and the fish are just not really committing yet. And I said, should we change flies? And he said, no, nah, they're, just, they're just cold, and they're not really committing. So we decided to come out here into where the current is uh, from the other lake and float this drift line because we saw some rainbows in the uh, in the foam line and we're going to try with a dry fly. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that one liked the chubby. Yeah. <laughs> Got the hook on that one. <laughs> Good job, man. That's a nice uh, size. It's a different size. You'll hear a lot of internet experts tell you, don't bring your line to leader connection inside the guides. But really, with the leaders we use these days, if you can land a fish without getting the line to leader connection inside your guides, you're probably using a leader that's too short. So there's a trick to doing this, and it doesn't matter whether you have a nail knot on the end or whether you have uh, a loop-to-loop -loop connection. You bring the fish in close, and if the fish makes a run, now you have to get used to this and you have to prepare yourself a little bit, but if the fish makes a run, yeah, that knot could catch on the guides, but if you point your rod tip right at the fish, the knot will go smoothly through the guide. So it's just a matter of paying attention, and if you see that fish begin to run, just point the rod at the fish and you'll be clear and you won't break your rod or break the fish off. Baby! <laughs> she like uh, TV. Yeah, he's a star. A Hollywood. <laughs> he's a star. He's a Hollywood fish. <laughs> so we had a great day here at the outlet of Lake General Carrera. We had fish chasing streamers. It was really exciting because the water's very clear and you can see those fish chasing the streamer right to the boat. So that was fun. Caught a couple nice fish. And then we had rainbows in the foam line where we could fish dry flies, sight fishing to rainbows in the foam line that we could see. And then the afternoon, the afternoon got a little slow. Uh, we caught a few fish. Uh, we saw a few fish. We had some good chases, uh, but the afternoon slowed down. But what a great day and I am exhausted from casting. All the guests and the guides packed up the vehicles and brought the boats down to the outflow of General Carrera Lake. It is actually the second largest lake in all of South America. It's really just the like, jaw-droppingly beautiful with the mountains and the color of the water again is just spectacularly blue. 
We were fishing in some very deep water that flowed from the lake into the river right under this beautiful orange bridge. And in the background, again, just towering mountain peaks capped in snow. So really, we couldn't have asked for a more picturesque backdrop for this day. And so we all hopped in our boats and the guides took us out on the water. We, I was with a great guide named Marcelo that day. I don't, oh! Oh my gosh, I, I'm trying to reel as fast as I can to keep tight to this fish, but he's taking me into the, he's taking me into the backing. If I land this fish, this, could be the biggest trout I've ever I've ever caught. Oh man, just based just based off that jump. I cannot believe it. I, I don't even know the last time I had a fish take me into the backing that wasn't a salmon. This is incredible. I just oh my goodness, I don't know if I've seen a trout this big. <sighs> That's a big fish. I don't even I don't even really have words. Okay, okay, okay. This was a fish fight very unlike anything I've ever felt before. And this fish just tore down river. <laughs> okay, I think the fly popped out after a really epic fight. Marcelo was able to get our boat over to the shoreline and we were able to land the fish. And I just have no words for watching that fish go into that net. The net was barely even big enough to handle a rainbow that size. It was just a big, beefy fish. And I'm so glad that I was able to land it, but also that there are a few other boats came over to watch and to witness. And it was such a really heartwarming, incredible feeling to be able to share in that excitement and joy with all of these people who were just as excited about me catching this fish as I was. I got a beautiful, beautiful brown trout. Brown trout always surprise me with how different their coloring can be and how vivid the spots are. And honestly, the size, especially with brown trout, in my opinion, doesn't matter because they're all just such pretty fish. And this one was absolutely no different. One of the really neat things that Eduardo has set up at the Patagonia Baker Lodge is a bunch of different options for fishing the different bodies of water. After our drive through the Patagonia Mountains to the Cockburn River, we parked the truck, we got all our gear together, and we did a short walk through the woods to get actually down to the river. And right away when we got there, um, we saw a brown trout just over the bank in some deeper water feeding and we cast to it. I cast to it, Marcelo cast to it. We switched the flies up and despite our best efforts, we just couldn't get that fish to take. So we put all our gear back on our backs and we continued walking down stream. And that's kind of the way that we did most of the day. Unfortunately, the fish were super picky that day. So despite our best efforts, we didn't get into too many fish. After lunch, Guide Marcelo got a very beautiful trout. That was pretty much all for that day. Good job. Want me to grab the net? As the day wore on, we actually came across some really good streamer water, so faster water um, that was not clear. You could not see fish in it, and you were kind of blind casting. So we switched it up, tossed on a streamer, and that is the water that Marcelo got the one fish of the day in. The experience of doing that kind of spot and stock fishing for trout on such a beautiful river was, it was great. It was beautiful and, and I think it goes to show that even on days when the fishing is tougher, when you're fishing a really technical stream and, and despite your best efforts you can't get a bite, those days are still wonderful days to be out on the river and to be enjoying nature.
One of the days we actually got to go by helicopter to the Hany Manny River, which was an awesome experience. To be able to go in the helicopter with other guests and go through the mountains and see glaciers was spectacular. And we met up with the guides right on the riverbank. It was such a neat way to get to a river and then to have access to such an incredible fishery. It was a really beautiful river. Again, as always here in Chile and Patagonia, there are these beautiful mountains in the backdrop. I did get that fish, this beautiful, beautiful brown trout. And to be able to, to release it and get that photo with the mountains in the background was just phenomenal. Guide Andy, who was also with us that day, he was able to get into another beautiful fish. It's so much fun just to see these incredible creatures and to share in the joy with somebody else. One of the great things that you can do outside of fishing when you're at the Patagonia Baker Lodge is take a drive through the mountains and go to the Patagonia National Park. massive park that you can hike through, you can drive through, and see so much wildlife. You can see the Wanakos, which are ch like Chilean alpacas, but they're so different. They're beautiful and they're everywhere. It's so great to just see them in their natural habitat. There is so much to see within the national park from the rugged landscape, to the trees, to the Wanakos, and it's all just a short drive from the lodge. Eduardo has thought of everything and has so many different options to offer you outside of angling if you want to explore the area. This trip was actually my first time ever coming to South America. I've never been this far away from home and never been to this part of the world. And I have to say, coming to Magic Waters and the Patagonia Baker Lodge and being with Eduardo and his, his team here, it made it very special. This is a very, a very special part of the world. And it's not just the beauty of the landscape. It's not just the incredible fishing, but it's the people that you meet that make it feel like home, even though home is so far away. I look around and I am just blown away every single day that we've been here on this trip by the beauty of the landscape and just all of the gratitude I have for nature and opportunities and the people that I've met. It is truly a, a truly special place that was the perfect location for my first trip to South America. We're not even gone yet and I cannot wait to come back and I'm mentally planning my next trip. Let's look at the equipment used here on the Baker River in Patagonia. For the river proper, we are using five and six weight distance and finesse fly rods for presentations of streamers, big terrestrials, and dry flies. Fly line consisted of five and six weight weight forward floating lines with nine to 12 foot tapered 3X leaders. Flies consisted of parachute atoms, size 12, chubby Chernobyl, size six and eight. Copper Johns in a variety of sizes and smallish streamers in natural colors. For Lago General Carrera, 
Tom was using six and seven weight fly rods with full sinking lines for streamers, five and six weight floating lines for terrestrials. Leaders were cut short to six to eight feet for deep presentations and nine foot tapered leaders for presentations of dries and terrestrials. You'll want to be able to cover the water column here, so come well gunned with different sink rates in your lines for best success. It's our final day here at the Baker River. Tom and I get ready to fish the top of the river together again, but apart. Today, I'm fishing with Nico, and Tom is with Guide Luciano. We begin shooting the rapids, fishing pockets the way down. Once the river flattens out, Tom decides to walk and wade, the gravel bar drops. Come on, fish, move a little closer, would ya? Ah, there we go. There we go. Now, when you get a fish downstream of you like this, there's a good chance the hook's gonna pull out. So the best thing to do is try to lead it over into the calmer water by moving your rod off to the side you want the fish to come to. And you get him into the slower, because you're usually waiting in slower water. So you wanna lead that fish off to the side, and if he goes back into the fast water, just try to lead him back by pulling your rod off to the side because the fish has to go the direction his head is pointed. So you get him in, get him in the more shallow water. It's a lot easier to, <laughs> it should be a lot easier to manipulate this fish because he's in the same water I'm standing in. That's what you want to do. Fish, you don't want to fish downstream of you if you can help it. If you could run downstream and get downstream of the fish and make him fight upstream, that's great. Here, I can't do that or I'm going swimming. So I had to try to, I had to fight the fish downstream, but I led the fish over into this shallower water, uh, shallower and calmer water, and then I can lead the fish around a lot easier than I can when he's fighting out in the current there. or not. Yeah, he did. Oh, that's a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So we just pulled into another gravel bar and we looked and there are these big dark shakes, shapes on the bottom. And first cast, this big rainbow just sidled over. The water was so slow, I couldn't really tell if the fish was taking it, but the dry fly just started to move a little bit. And, I took a chance and set the hook, and there he was. So beautiful, big, beautiful, fat rainbow. Nice brown. That's a rainbow. Woo. Long distant nymph. Gracias. And the overall, you know, Baker River experience was something that I've never, never even dreamed of before, and it lived up to every expectation. Yeah, it's probably the biggest river I've ever fished for trout in my life. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and the fishing was fantastic. So yeah. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Eduardo Barreto for his hospitality, the guides for their expertise, and thank you for watching. It's been an unbelievable adventure here in Chile and Patagonia, and we appreciate you joining us on this trip. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than with a fly rod in your hand? From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, including Tom Rosenbauer, I'm Mark Melnick. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you on the rivers of Chilean Patagonia. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Magic Waters Patagonia Baker Lodge, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,